In this video, I use foul language, oh. and I eat some chips. Hello and welcome. If you follow the channel, you know that I was looking for a W202 Mercedes C43 AMG. In my search, I came across this C280, which was a one owner Florida car, and I got a soft spot for these things, so I went ahead and picked it up. It became my daily driver, and one day while leaving work, the check engine light came on and the car was stuck in limp mode. I had it towed to the shop only to find out that it was a bad ABS sensor. When we went ahead to go and replace it, we also noticed that the fuel lines, which are directly next to the ABS sensor, were loose to the point where it was dripping fuel. So it was a blessing in disguise. We went ahead and tightened up the fuel lines, got the sensor in, and got the car back on the road. Don't worry, the fun doesn't stop there. We're going to start this video off with replacing what appear to be the original spark plugs. So the tools we'll be using today, got my 3 8 extension, a 10 millimeter socket for the bolts holding this piece of the intake. Uh, for the hose clamp, if I need to remove it, I have a 7mm socket. You can use a screwdriver, flathead or Phillips, but these are less likely to slip. And for the cover, you have a 5mm Allen bit here to take this cover off. Okay. Let's get started. I've got my impact. I won't use it on these, just on these guys here. I'll be gentle, you don't want to strip anything. Or lose anything. See if I can do without. Just leave that since this flexes. Ah, there's two of them. So there's two of these clips here. One on the top and one on the bottom. Okay. What do we have over here? Come here, you. Aha. I have, hmm, so holding this in right here, there is another clamp similar to this. So that's a long distance there. That's what they make extensions for, right? Once you get it started, you can ditch the ratchet. Oh, come on. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, and you can just set it up there. Don't make the wire too tight, but this way you don't have to unplug the mass airflow sensor and risk all kinds of check engine lights. What the heck? Okay, that's interesting. I wonder if that's factory running like that. Well, I don't have a check engine light, so I'm going to leave it. Okay. This is the first time I'm doing this on this specific engine. I've done it on older Mercedes. Well, to be honest, the older Mercedes, you don't have this. They're just wires and plugs.
last one in the back you're not going to get with an impact. As a matter of fact, it's getting tight with the ratchet, so... I would fire up the air compressor and use the air ratchet, but it's laid out. And I have neighbors. So we'll just be gentle. Okay, so on the cover here you have a diagram. So there's only three coils. One on top of six that leads to one. One on top of two that leads to five. And the one that's on the four leads to three. And look, they even the square is for the coil location, round is for where the wire goes. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll just start from the front of the engine and go back and uh, see what we got. Okay. No oil, it's dry. Very dry. Okay, good. Good. Let's get this down on the plug. Nice and gentle. Don't want to break anything. And never use it in an impact. God, I've seen people use impacts on all kinds of stuff. And you just, you don't need an impact for everything. That doesn't look too bad. Well, let's whip out the new Bosch and see what we got. Here are the new ones. They're Bosch, got them from FCP Euro. And if you see right there, do it focus. Made in Russia. The good stuff. And you don't want to forget this stuff as well, or anything like it that you put on. Just a dab on the very top there so it doesn't get stuck. It locks out moisture and so you don't get this, the boot stuck to it so you're ripping them off when you go to put new plugs or do any work. And I've already checked the gap. Always thread them in by hand. And you can't go by hand anymore. Don't over torque them. I let somebody borrow my torque wrench so and they haven't returned it, so I'm just going to have to, from experience, that's about good. Don't overdo it. You'll be sorry. Nice satisfying click. Alright. That was tight. Okay. Now. How the hell do I get the coil off? So, from what I've read, it's easy to just get underneath. Oh! Pull. Yeah. But oh my god, would you look at these plugs? I don't know, they say made in... Fr Man, this one is burnt. Jeez, Ugh. a trick I learned from an old friend, go ahead and every plug you take out, put in a box and number it. So we know the front is one and two, three, four, five, six. So this is the spark plug from cylinder one. And my pen decides not to write right now. Well, yep, so mark this as cylinder one. That way, if you ever have an issue, you can go back and look at each individual spark plug and it'll tell you if there was something going on. You can have a comparison. You know which one came from which cylinder.
Okay. There we go. Put that in there. Now be careful. Old wires, old electronics. You don't want to move around too much. Number three. Just to show you, look at that. That grease is still on there. Although this cylinder, this uh, plug looks a lot better than that number two cylinder. Let me show you. Three. This is the one that came out of cylinder three. And this is the one that came out of cylinder two. Look at that difference. And they're the same identical brand. Hmm. So what I've noticed, if it's been on there for a while and you go to pull it and it won't come out, go grab an edge and roll it back a little bit and then just wiggle it back and forth, rolling each edge out slowly with your finger. And there you go. All right. Okay, let's see the top of it. No, there's just that one cylinder so far. This one doesn't look bad, but it does have a little bit of oil on it. Always be careful where you put your support hand. Don't put on anything that would break. I've done that before. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, uh, you got to be careful unless you want to take everything apart. You know, I don't need to unplug this. If I can get this... No, I do. Because you want to tilt it back that way so you don't have to unplug the other harness that comes from... wherever. Uh, okay, that came off relatively easy. Okay, so did that. Alright, let's be gentle. Let's not upset the wiring. <sighs> yeah, it seems... So that's two of them now that are under the coils, and as you can see, they look, they look kind of cooked. Okay. Make sure everything's tightened up. Let's put this back on and let's button her back up. If you're gonna use an impact, be gentle.
Okay, let's get the bottom clamp first, then the top. Okay, let's put the mass airflow sensor wire back where it belongs. Get our 10 millimeter bolts. Start them off by hand. Always start off by hand if you can, even if it's uh, using a socket. Don't want to cross thread anything. And if you ever have to work on it again, you'll have pain to pay. Double check everything. What's that? That must have been from before. All right, let's start her up. Okay, so we got the, uh, this is the passenger side. This is the side that was humming. It's actually pretty easy. There is this guy right here you gotta undo. This guy right here, he's a T30. You loosen that. And this guy comes off. And then the whole hub slides off. That was real easy pulling it off. In most cases, you'll need a puller like this one to get that hub off. Getting the bearings out of the hub was pretty easy. I just use a hammer and a screwdriver and knock them out. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to demonstrate how to grease the bearings. If you don't have the proper tool that's used to grease them, to force grease through them, you put some grease in your hand and you start rubbing the bearing up against the grease in your hand till it pushes out the other side. You continue this all the way around until the bearing is fully greased. After you've gotten the grease all the way through the bearing itself, you can grab the hub and grease it up as well. Be generous with the grease. You don't want to put too little and you don't want it to go dry. Then you can go ahead and place the bearings back in the hub. As you see here, I'm just gently going to tap with the hammer just to get them started. I have the hub being held in place in a vise. And then I'm going to use a large socket to set it on top so that I can hammer it in evenly. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put some grease on the car, and then I'm going to go ahead and put that hub back in place. You want to make sure that it's seated properly, then go ahead and put the nut back on. Use some channel locks or something so that you can go ahead and tighten it up, and then go ahead and tighten that T30 bolt that clamps it in place. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the brakes. I should have recorded myself taking them off, 
but I'll be honest, it's a very, very, very simple procedure. You have two bolts that hold the caliper, two bolts that hold the bracket, and one bolt that holds the rotor in place onto the hub. On a difficulty level from zero to 10, it's a three at most. It's a very, very easy job. Once you have the bracket in place, you can go ahead and place the pads in the bracket itself. After that, you go ahead and make sure that you've pushed the piston back in the caliper and then you can slide it on top and tighten it up as well. Make sure to grease the sliders when you're reinstalling the caliper. You don't want them to freeze up. It's very common that people don't grease them and then when they freeze, they pinch and you wind up needing to replace the caliper and the bracket instead of just pads and rotors. Also on German cars, you'll note that there is a pad wear sensor. Make sure to have a new one of these, or if your old one is still okay, make sure it's plugged in and connected properly. Then you go ahead and snug everything up, tighten it up, make sure everything is good. You don't want anything loose, but at the same time, try not to over tighten. As you can see here, my attempt to repair the plastic under the dash was unsuccessful. You can see I started to glue it together, but then it broke in multiple other places. So what we're going to do is this guy right here, this is what bolts up on underneath the dash and that plastic and vinyl is what attached to this. I found some vinyl that matches the color and I got some headliner foam what I'm going to do is glue these two together the foam to the vinyl and then attach it to this piece right here I'm going to try to use where the rivets are if I can cut small holes and slide it down under each one of these the only issue is this open area here needs some reinforcement. So this is where the handbrake is. So what I'm going to do is I got some metal that I'm going to run across in a few spots so that it can brace the vinyl. There could be some support and still have room for the handbrake. And down here for the uh, hood latch. So let's uh, cut a piece that will cover this whole thing and then we can cut out what we need to for uh, the hood release and the handbrake and uh, let's see how it goes if you're wondering why i'm going through all this trouble making this part and not just buying another one it's because it's not available anywhere i couldn't find it new or used i had people helping me look for this part all over the world and every single one we found was already broken Give it a little bit more, just room for air. I bought plenty. 
but enough to do this three times over in case I screw up. And since this is the first time I'm ever attempting anything like this, the probability of me screwing up is quite high. Okay. All right. And then let's go ahead and let's just mark it there. Okay. See how it goes. Well, I could almost do it this way. Actually, I just remembered I got a brace. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run two pieces of this metal here. One from down here to that hole there where the screw goes into the dashboard and then another one a little higher across. Uh, I figured I can get them tucked in here nice and deep and then they can go in here if I need to I can either put a little bit of JB weld or you know attach them somehow to this but I can't find my cutters so I have to make do with this contraption here so I can bend them till they give Okay. That's one. Head back over to the table so I can sit down and do this.
and there is the finished product see if you can see how close I got I mean I literally just went to Joanne fabrics and got the closest thing I could but doesn't look too bad now let's come over to the other side this is where it got tricky you've got the emergency brake here or the brake release and you've got the hood release here as well so everything works I just bent down the little bit of metal that I had put here to fill in this area as it was completely empty and as you can see it's actually pretty decent it's nice and soft it doesn't stick out as much either so I don't hit my knee as much and then for the side piece what I did I still got to see if I can get that any better you know but I've put a piece of velcro here all the way down so you can peel that back and you have access to in here uh, and um, it doesn't look too too terrible you got access to your hood release the parking brake release uh, releases as it should and you know it doesn't it doesn't look bad and it matches it's uh, the best I could do myself uh, with what I had because they don't make that part anymore Next, we move on to the paint correction. As you can see from these pictures here, the paint had a lot of swirl marks, a lot of dirt, imperfections, and fade. The car lived its entire life in Florida and for the past eight to 10 years was outside under a carport. My intention was to film the entire process of the paint correction. However, when I asked my brothers who were helping me out to go ahead and turn the camera on, each one of them thought I was talking to the other one. So nobody turned the camera on and it didn't get recorded. All we have are these pictures of the difference before and after. If you see this picture coming up right here, you'll also see that there was a spot around the washer nozzle that was bubbling. I went ahead and sanded it down, cleaned it up, treated it, and then continued on with the paint correction. After a few passes, it started to really, really look better. As soon as the car was finished, I had a lapse in judgment, put it up on Craigslist listing all the repairs that we had done to it. The first person who came saw the car, bought it. Luckily, they were a Mercedes enthusiast and they sent me this picture of the car in their garage, letting me know that Betty had found a good new home. I'll miss her, that's for sure, but unfortunately, I can't keep every car that I buy. So, for now, it's on to the next one. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.